I was diagnosed with autism when I was nine. Everyone's disability is so personal to them. People definitely need to know that everyone is different. Like The education system was awful. They say they understand you, but they don't. I have learned so much more coming out of school than I did in school. Why do I constantly have to be an advocate for myself? Because that's life, not everyone's going to listen. <laughs> Today's guest, Mason Mine, is a disabled content creator and fellow podcast host who happens to have ASD and Crohn's disease. It's a great conversation to have with Mason today, particularly surrounding the education system when it comes to disability. I really do hope you enjoy this episode, so please sit back, relax and enjoy. Welcome to the Not Quite Podcast. I'm Charlie Randall. Let's get ready to rewrite the rule book. Welcome back to the Not Quite Pod. Today we've got Mason with us. Mason, did you want to let everyone know who you are, what you do, and a bit about yourself? Yes. So, h- hello to everyone seeing this today. Um, and as, as Charlie said, I'm Mason. Um, I'm based in the UK, and I'm a podcaster myself. And I've been doing that for about like uh, early 2020 ish when the first lockdown was so i've been doing it ever since then and i thought it was going to be a mini kind of thing that i was going to do just uh, throughout the lockdowns and it wasn't so i'm still doing it now um and yeah i i, I do that um in, in my spare time i do i like doctor who so as you can see i'm filled with it around me so um i, I do really like that and i love to raise awareness and acceptance of for, um my autism that i have and my Crohn's disease that i have so just to let people know about me. So yeah, that, 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 that's a little bit about me. Awesome. I think there's a bit of a delay, so I'll just sort that out in editing, but that's not a problem. Um, but yeah, um, you mentioned obviously about your um, disabilities with your ASD and your Crohn's. Um, tell us a bit more about that. So like, how does it affect you? What are some of your daily challenges? Um, just a bit more about those that maybe don't know so much about those disabilities and those conditions. Um, just give yeah. us a general overview. Yeah, so I was diagnosed with autism when I was nine, and I'm 21 now, so it's a little bit a while ago since I was diagnosed with that. Um, and how that affects me is um, it really affects me um, within maybe understanding certain things. So um, I'm not the best at math, so, <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, I may need certain help in areas, but in a really, I'm very sensory with my autism, and autism. So what that means, um, I struggle to I get really annoyed with certain sounds um so it, especially when people eat I, I I process when a certain food needs to make noise and a certain food doesn't and this in yeah. it, it may be a family member or meeting around someone it, it, it really impacts me if it's like two people or just one if you have a room like if you're at school or university or something that's fine like that can't be helping that that, that, that is completely fine. But so say we're having a, someone's having a bowl of soup, and it's, it's almost like a drink to me. Like, uh, it doesn't mean to make a load of noise. And I'll, I'll say to someone, some people do it just to annoy me because they know it annoys me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, um, and I, I'll say, why don't do that? But, um, but yeah, that that affects me there. And w- with my with my Crohn's, um, a little bit different. Um I was diagnosed with that when I was um, in 2017, actually. So coming up, I would say, I think six years now, six or seven years, um, quite a long time. And how how that affects me is um, every every day is different. So I take medication for it um, to keep me okay, I guess. Um, And I take medication that maybe it's quite high dose medication that makes you really vulnerable to catching colds. Um, and stuff right. so um so with that uh it, it helps me because just make sure i'm not in any pain hopefully um but um but yeah um with that it affects it will affect everybody differently so, so chrome is known for a lot of people having over stoma bags um like i don't have one myself but um and a lot of people have surgery um but w- when i was diagnosed with both I had no clue what they were, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so over the years, I've learnt more what they are, what what they impact you. What's um What's one thing that you wish people? Because I know as well that because um, all, all, particularly with autism, it's a, it's a spectrum, and so it affects different people differently. Um, what's one thing you wish people knew about autism? 
Well, one thing I wish people knew was um, it's not a disease, and uh, a lot of people get um, they get things wrong, and um, and actually um, on the recent speech that I done, I, I, the one thing I kept bringing up about autism was um, and was that people need to be treated as an individual rather than a group um yeah. because i know I, i've had both experiences because i went to a mainstream school then i went to a special school that people have with autism and, and different and, and other stuff as well and i remember in a lesson teacher would say you all do this expecting you know what you're doing and i i just think one people people definitely need to know that everyone is different like like me and and someone else who's autistic or not is not going to experience the same thing. We may have a similar maybe level of how good we are or how maybe not so good we are. But yeah, I, I think that's one thing that definitely people should know that it's not a group thing. It's a person on their own. Yeah, and I think to be fair, that's a that's a statement for the whole of the same community of everyone's mm. disability is so personal to them and how it affects them like for example with my condition cerebral palsy there is so there that's a bit of a spectrum there's so many different levels of it you've got someone who's able to walk you've got someone who's not able to walk you've got someone that's non-verbal there is just so many different layers to it and people need to i think it's just a general thing when it comes to disability of not putting us all in one pretty little box and going that's what it means to be a disabled person when actually there, there is a much wider range and much wider range of things to learn and to educate people on. Um, so you mentioned briefly just there um, about schooling. What was growing up like for you? Um, I didn't really like primary school that much. Um, mm. Probably because no one liked me. I don't know why. <laughs> no, one, no one liked me. I was, I was on my own. Um, I, I didn't really like that. Um, and... Um, but the primary school wasn't great, but um, it wasn't. So I like at the end of year six, what happened was everyone that on the note we we put who maybe a friend that we wanted to go to the same school with each other, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't get anyone that I picked. <laughs> um, oh, I, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't get anyone that I picked. I got a person that that was. Went to, was in the same class, but I say we wasn't as we wasn't a, we wasn't friends. I guess um, we were just maybe mutuals. Like we, 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 we won't be mean to each other, but we was just friends in a, in a way. But and then I didn't know anyone, um, and I did meet one friend um, when I transitioned into mainstream school, which I was only there for a year. Um, I was only there for a year. It seems so much longer though of how bad it was in the um, the education system was awful they say they understand you but they don't um so at that moment in time my confidence was really low so say if i in class i needed help i wouldn't say that um because i knew i wouldn't get it um i would only ask for help if i knew maybe i was going to get it um so yeah that 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 wasn't very good and you you would get told off for things that weren't necessary to be a punishment um so if you did something and you thought it was the right thing, you would get in trouble for it. So it there, it wasn't very good. But um, after a year, because getting into, let's say, a special school, um, it's very hard to do that without maybe an educational AHCP and and, and and stuff like that. Um, so I, I, I was able to get into a special school, but it was very hard because going to new schools is, especially if you're the new kid, um, and no one knows who you are. Yeah. Um, and at the start, it was very tough. And then years go by, and then I get I, I did get liked because I I, I I like I like my football. So um, I was known for doing well when when we had football tournaments and stuff in, on the football nice. court. Um, and the difference that I liked between the two schools was that I'm more I was more of a role model, I guess, and people would look up to me more in. Yeah special school rather than mainstream that I maybe had the one or one or a few friends that yeah. would um that I would see and 
Um, I was I kept it really quiet. You see, when I left, I didn't tell many people because I didn't want a, a whole situation about it. Yeah. And and then the teachers told everyone, and then they, they were saying on the last day they, they they told everyone, and then I had teachers saying to me, "You should have told me that you were leaving." Um, and um, I did. The funny thing was though, on that last day. Me and this, I really liked this maths teacher, and the maths teacher was leaving the same day as me, so we kind of celebrate together. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So kind of ups and down, ready school. Yeah. I mean, it's it's interesting as well because like I feel like that's a common thing you said about obviously growing up in in primary school. I think it's a common thing when you've got disability. Well, to be honest, it's for anyone, but there's an added layer of it when you've got a disability of like trying to find your feet. Because you're still learning about, I mean, we're all still learning about our conditions and our disabilities and so on now. But especially then, it's so weird. Because in your head, you're the same as everyone else. But that's not how society sees you and other people see you. So it's all about finding finding your way to navigate this very strange world. And I always say, like, one of my biggest things when I grew up, was I, I I went to a mainstream school throughout school, but my big thing that I always say to people was I spent far too long in school trying to get in with the quote unquote popular kids that I never really fit. And then all of a sudden I stopped trying and then I found a group of friends that I could actually rely on. They're still my friends now, biggest supporters of NQBC. Like they, they're actually true friends. And I feel like that was a big turning point for me. And I think it is true about finding the right environment for you to thrive because it's too many people go, it's again, it's coming back to that one size fits all. You must, you, you do better in a, in a mainstream school. And actually, no, you're better off looking at the individual and going, what's going to be best for them? Not what's the social norm. Like, oh, we'll, we'll try them in a mainstream, see if it works. If it doesn't work, then we'll look at a special. It should be, if spe- if a specialist school is the better place for that person to be, that should be where they should be. But then I know, obviously, from doing my work on social media and working a little bit in the education sector, the other issue with that is there's just not enough spaces in special schools and in yeah, in normal schools. And that's, uh, yeah. sorry, not normal schools, that's the wrong word, but mainstream schools, because there's just not enough focus on getting kids in the right settings for their education is to prepare them for life and that's the thing it was like we all learn in different ways and that's what I really struggle with when people are like oh this is how we got to do things I'm like people learn so differently to one another like, I've learned so much more coming out of school than I did in school and I will say that on here and like I, I've sat and taught myself so many different things but because I'm doing it in the way that I understand it and that's that's what we really need to get to when it comes to education. But you said about um, there, so you access the specialist school without, you say without an EHCP? Um, well, I, I no, I, 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 I had to have it. I, I, I had to um, have it because it, it was really when I joined special school, it um, was very limited on spaces. Yeah. Um, so, so that what it was like, and the school that what was. It, it was moved about a lot like um and yeah i i was able to get in i i looked around i think about maybe two schools and um i knew the one i wanted to pick um it, it was just it, it was just really good and it was very it, it was very hard like it, it shouldn't be we should it shouldn't be the case that we're saying it's very hard to get into a special school um um i think like it, it, it is annoying that we have to call them names like we, we have to call uh, a mainstream school a mainstream school we have to call a special school a special school we can't just call it school um because of all these people that don't have the education of certain things if it's autism if it's cerebral palsy if it's something else like i think there needs to be more education um into lots of different things and like um i i always say like say you in school you have a teacher your normal teacher let's say is ill and they're not in and they have a supply teacher and and it happened a lot i had a i had a conversation recently with a mda staff that was in my class when i was in year eight let's say mm. i was in year eight we had a conversation about it <laughs> and we laugh now but it's, it's it's very serious um because 
an MDR staff comes in, has no knowledge, comes in last minute, has no knowledge of any of the students, and expects everyone as a group to know what they're doing. And you, have, you often find the MDA staff doing more than the actual supply teacher that's coming in. Um, and that's the annoying thing. And and as a student, you can actually see that, like, the, the MDA staff might as well take the class rather than a, a, a new teacher just come in and has yeah. no knowledge on anyone there. Yeah, it's really hard because there's so much nuance when it comes to teaching class kids, whether they've got additional needs or not. Like, I, I always come back to, I remember we had a supply teacher once, and the first thing she does to me is comes up come up to me and go, hiya, do you know what you do? Bear in mind, I'm like year 10. Year 10, and she's like, hi, yeah, do you know what you're doing? And I'm like, yeah, I know perfectly what I'm doing. And I'm also not uh, just, it's that stereotype of disability yeah. that we're all stupid. And like, oh, it just drives me crazy. Because I think, I always think, how we, we're in 2020, well, this at the time was probably what, 20, 2010, probably. Uh, we're in 2010. How are we still here where you're like, oh, yeah, all disabled people are stupid? Yeah, like, a lot of disabled people can do so much more than than, than people think. Um, and actually, people who are non-verbal can as well. Like, mm. like, 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 like um, that, this is the thing. With people that maybe need that extra support, they, 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 they stay with that one person that maybe isn't, they may think that's worse or, like, than someone else but the fact is that someone who maybe is able to communicate may struggle and they just feel like maybe they don't want to ask your help because they that they, they feel like that you don't they feel like you, you don't want to offer that help that you provide it's all about making the right environment for people to feel comfortable to ask for help and that's the big yeah. thing it's like someone's got to feel comfortable to come up to someone and go look i don't know what i'm doing or i need help understanding this and that's the thing if you've not got that if you've not got the environment where you feel comfortable and you're not going to be judged for going up and saying look i don't get this um can i have some help and that if that environment's not ready for you then you're not going to ask because no one likes to, no one likes to be made to feel stupid and that's what oftentimes unintentionally some teachers can do is make those of us that have additional needs feel stupid because we don't want we don't want to stick out that i think that is the whole thing is like at the end of the day we want to be treated like anyone else but we know in the back of our heads that actually we're different to everyone else and that's the thing is that whole balancing game of being your true self but then also try to fit in it just doesn't doesn't work <laughs> does not work but coming back to your point you said earlier about like obviously people having a better understanding of different disabilities and and how they affect individuals how would you like to see that education done in terms of like, would it, would you want it to happen through media, TV, or would you like it to be more of a traditional route of like showing more disability in schools? How would, how do you think would be best to yeah. do that education? I think the best way to go is oh, definitely in schools um, and education as you're growing up, because I think with, like with TV, a lot of things um, are made and it's not the best how they could be doing it um like like at, like you have um i think you had chris packham's autistic mind thing that he'd done um and a lot of people see the positive but there is quite a lot of bad things about it that people don't want to talk about um that saying that um like a lot of people have applied and it hasn't been really said about it, um that much like because in if you if you see it a lot of people are in it um that are offering needing support from chris packham and, and his team to be able to talk about maybe to, to loved ones about their autism or or how, how it's maybe masking how that's impacting them but they they didn't actually say that so i i believe in the application a lot of people apply just thinking that they're going to go on the show and share their experience of autism and um i did too and and that affects a lot of people like um it's like anything like a show picking certain people over a, a, a wide community that people have that um and i think that that's where you have to be careful with t television and um where um i think the best thing going forward is definitely schools like education um like 
talking about it maybe for 15 minutes in PSSHE or something like that. Um, like you talk about, this, like I always say, certain things can be um, a lesson, a whole lesson, like you have your English, like you have your maths. Why mm-hmm. don't have a have a whole lesson about autism, cerebral palsy, like all different, there's loads of different yeah. things that you can have a lesson about because you can, there's so many topics. It's not like it's just one thing that that mm-hmm. it is. It's a, common, it, yeah. it's a common debate I have with myself because I often wonder whether schools should do like an education lessons on like, you know, like the broad ranges of disability when it comes to like the medical yeah. model. So you've got like social communication needs, communication interaction, um, physical uh, disabilities and so on. I always wonder whether we'd be better suited doing a base level of education to say, look, these are like the core areas you can look to. And that isn't to say someone's got to fit in this box but it gives you a better understanding of going oh okay so and so's got this kind of challenge which then fits into this category so he may need support with this area so it gives someone a bit more just a bit more knowledge to be able to comfortably step forward i'm not saying like we all as i say i don't want to, that theory of like everyone fitting in the pretty little box but then it gives like people like structure people like a system that they can follow so this is a way to maybe give them that. It's really weird. Like and then I sit there going, no, because people should just educate themselves. But then I'm like, but people aren't going to do that because people are lazy. So like, yeah. you need to give them a system to get it to work. But I don't know what your views are on that in terms of yeah. are we better off keeping it broad and just teaching them the bright, the basics. So then people have got some knowledge to then if they want to go off and learn about autism, if they want to go off and learn about APD, if they want to go off and learn about cerebral palsy, they can, but they know sort of where to look, if that makes sense. Yeah. I, 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 I'm I always saying that, like, just educating people is great. Like, it's, it can, like you say, it can be tiring. And, like, um, it can be tiring just going on about it. Um, and, but if we don't go on about it, we'll, we'll get nowhere. Um, but I, I do think within the actual education system, lots of improvements do need to be made. Um, and I think I'm always seeing people saying that, that they are trying to find ways to improve certain things um, within within certain things. But I definitely agree. Like We, we do need a, a certain process because when I was at Mainstream, there was an isolation room. Uh, so say if you were naughty, you you go in the isolation room. I didn't go in the isolation room, but I knew certain people did go in the isolation room, but saying they weren't doing many things that were bad. And I think you, I think teachers and not all teachers are, are bad. I've met a load of teachers that are really good. Yeah. Um, um, but some just need to think about how they talk to people. Um, I think it's just in life. How, how you talk to someone is really important. Yeah. Like how, how, how you come across your tone like how you're speaking um sometimes you can spot if people seem being sarcastic and you've got to be really careful if, if people are being sarcastic because being, spotting sarcasm is very hard um if you don't know the person yeah how holding my hands up there i'm, I'm very sarcastic so i have yeah. to hold my hands i am up there. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I like to be sarcastic too. Like in certain situations, that are just funny. Like um, like sometimes it could be involved around like interest that you have, maybe like football, and you just yeah. you've been sarcastic around the team that maybe is is about to bottle the league or something like that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, you've got certain situations that that can be sarcastic. In. <laughs> I think my worst habit is I don't realize I'm doing it. So like. Mm. One one time, and I think I've said this before on the podcast, I was sitting sitting in my office, and uh, anyway, someone's chatting away like, over there, and uh, she, she, my colleague's gone, oh, yeah, I'm going to go for a walk. And, like, without thinking, I'm, like, typing away, just because it's my sense of humour. I've gone, I wouldn't know what that's like, carried on typing. In a sarcastic, I can't walk kind of way. I've never seen my colleague look so mortified in terms of not knowing how to react. I was like... You can laugh. It was, it was me mm. making a joke about myself. It's absolutely fine to laugh. But you know, you're like, I didn't even realise I said it. I went, yeah. oh, that came out without thinking. Oh dear. Um, don't worry. Yeah. I, I I guess if someone that you don't like or such, maybe at work or something, you can make them feel bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, that was the worst thing because she, like, she was sat there like, I don't know whether to laugh. I don't know whether to like walk away i don't know whether to stay quiet i don't, I don't know what to do 
Yeah, um, I had a, a recent situation about um, a person that was, who was sarcastic, and um, I, I, it was really hard to read because I didn't know the person um, because yeah. because of my crimes. Um, like a recent event I went to, after I'd done my speech, I said, people come up to me if you want to ask me questions. A lot of people come up to me to handshake my hand. And mm-hmm. I said, I didn't want to shake hands um, because, um, like, one, I... I think it's just it's quite dirty because you don't know where people's hands have been, um, and and two just because my health like for, for my Crohn's yeah, and yeah. Uh, and uh, I came across to one person and I didn't have the chance to explain why. Um, I said I, I don't do handshakes and they said oh great um, and yeah it, I could tell that was very sarcastic <laughs> um, and then um, I got a higher up person just to say to them um, I hope they didn't get the wrong end of the stick because. I, I, in a other scenario, I might well shake your hand, but it's just you've got to be very careful sometimes. Yeah. It's about it's about obviously looking after yourself, but obviously you've got the additional consideration of you're immunocompromised in terms of picking up colds and stuff. So it makes complete sense. And I think people just need to be a bit more, because they might not know about it, but just don't act like it's a big thing. If someone says to you, I don't shake hands, I don't shake hands. It's the same as someone going, I don't like mushrooms. Yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, that, that 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 that's right. And like in this day and age, people get offended over the littlest things. Um, if it's shaking hands, if it's saying step back because you're going too close. Um, and yeah, it's it's it, it, it's very crazy. Like, but but that was only one of the um things at the event that was there but a lot of people did understand that a person i said to, to another person they said oh i i should have asked before i should i should have thought before so you yeah. have this is why we say everyone's different like not everyone's going to be the same not everyone's going to have the same sense of humor not everyone's going to understand so the, the more we educate people about certain things the more hopefully they'll understand a little bit better yeah definitely and i think that's how we it's hard because it's that whole argument of like why do i constantly have to drone on about my disability but then it comes back to that if you don't someone's got to do it so (laughs) if we all do it together we're all gonna have to do it less in the long run whereas if everyone sits out someone's got to take the hit and do all of it it's really hard it's it comes back to that whole thing of like why do I constantly have to be an advocate for myself but then on the flip side, like it's weird for me because I like it. So like it, it's weirdly I get fun out of it because I'm strange like that. I, I get fun out of teaching people about disabilities and making them feel a bit more at ease about the topic. But then other people say, oh, well, why do I have to do it? Because it's no one else's business from what my disability is and how it affects me. But then we're humans by nature and by nature we're all curious and we all want to learn something new. So like they're only asking you because they've not been exposed to someone like you before so they're asking so then they're better educated going forward it's a really weird one it's a really weird one i don't know what your views are i know you're you're quite into educating people and really like teaching them something and really like getting into the nitty-gritty of the topic but i don't know what your views are on those individuals that maybe don't aren't at that point in their journey to discuss their, their disability yeah, I, I, I think it's really hard to to start actually um talking about it because I, I kinda of decided to to start all in actually when I created my podcast in, in twenty twenty. Um because I was start, I would I would have been done at a fair few years, um, maybe three years I was diagnosed and I didn't want to talk with Crohn's and I didn't want to talk about anything. Um I, and I didn't even know anyone else had it and it was the same with autism at the time. Um, I didn't know anyone else, and it's it's really hard because you don't expect people to talk about it straight away. Some people will, um, yeah. which I, I think is, which I think is great. Um, but yeah, I, I, some people out there, uh, it, I do always encourage people to talk about it um, in any way they can. Like it could it don't have to be a podcast, it don't have to be a speech. It could even just be uh, you just tell someone about your story, um, and it's your choice when you want to talk about it because um, some people just have a uh, maybe something and they just say they have it. They don't want to talk yeah. about it all the time, and which is completely understandable. Like, I'll go on about it and if I go to 
a theatre or something, I go on about to the staff, I, I try to make things more as, and as, accessible because a lot of things aren't in the world at certain yeah. places. Um, like, for example, I for, for my Crohn's, I have to have decaf, a lot of decaf drinks. And so I went to a pub, they, they wouldn't supply decaf, no chance. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, and unless you have a little maybe coffee machine on the side, and they normally do that, but they need like with that kind of stuff, a lot of things in the world aren't at, at, like things that we can have. Um, it's more looked at like the world, the people in the world are all healthy and all can have the same things in life, but that's not the case. Like, a load of people have certain situations and certain conditions that we don't know of. Like, um, I know, like, like load of people I know people that actually have a lot people can actually have more than one chronic illness and um it's crazy that you think that like you'd think one is bad enough which it is but yeah people uh, like um I found that I I know about maybe three or four people that have autism and Crohn's but um actually you'll find a lot of people with autism won't just have autism they'll have something else as well um, yeah. If it's a chronic illness, um, if it's um, cerebral palsy, I, 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 I know someone that has autism and cerebral palsy. Um, yeah. So it's it's very common, and it isn't a bad thing because it just gives you <laughs> it gives you time to just say, "Look, I can talk about another thing." I, I, people yeah, don't yeah. just think I'm going about one; I can go about something else. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, it gives you a bit of variety. That's that's what it yeah. is. Yeah, it gives that's you a bit of variety. Um, so what and you mentioned obviously earlier that you're that um eating you find eating um a sensory issue. Is there anything else that you find quite overwhelming in terms of do you find like um large spaces so like anything like theatre appearances, festivals, anything like that? Do you find that sort of situation overwhelming or, um or is it something else? Um. Well, yeah. I I I, I won't um like theatres. It's more overwhelming maybe recently because of my being vulnerable so I have to yeah. go contact the theatre I have to contact it can I get a box where no one else is um and like I I, I won't mind around the sound around that but say I'm in a cinema and people eat I, 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 I won't really like that um because I'm there to watch the film not watch not yeah, the every way yeah Popcorn and a sensory issue surrounding food does not sound like sound like the one. But then again, that's annoying for anyone. If anyone yeah. like, it's annoying that that just yeah, you're there to watch the film. Like, shut up. It's like that whole thing. We had a conversation a little. I had a conversation with a friend the other day, and he was saying that his thing was, why do people chat at like gigs and like concerts? Like, you've paid all this money to go <laughs> see this person, but yet you're chatting about what you had for dinner last week. Yeah, it it doesn't it, make sense. It is crazy. Like, um, I would go. To, I, I I love going to the football. Like, yeah. um, I, I'm a season ticket, and my 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 team I support. Um, and I like like I will now if I went, I I'd wear a mask just to keep safe. And the reason I wouldn't go as much now with purely because like COVID is over for a lot of people now. Um, in yeah. in 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 the UK, let's say. Um, but when I would go, I would look at people behind me, and they'll be checking the scores elsewhere. And then, like, like you say for the, the, like the your friend, um, I, I'm thinking you're here to watch the match. You're not here yeah. to focus on other people. But it might you might be curious, but they got a half time and look at it. Like it's not yeah. it's not gonna that game's not gonna stop. Like you're here yeah. to watch your team, watch them, and stop bickering. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. I get that completely. I'm I'm curious now. What football team do you support? Yeah. Um, oh, I support Ipswich. Ipswich, Ipswich. Town. Um, nice. Yeah. That's um, Ed Sheeran's club, isn't it? He, he sponsors yeah. the club. Yeah. It is Ed Sheeran's, yeah. He, he, he does sponsor the club. He's, he, he, he was at the match the other day when we, I think, for Easter weekend. Um, he, he, oh, cool. he, he went to them once. But he, he's, he's very good to support for the club. He even does gigs around Ipswich sometimes. A couple of years ago, I did go to what, one of his um, concerts. Um, before before pandemic, and the interesting thing is, it was it the, the like um so they would have these you know you know your little 
toilets that they have scattered around, like you go in, like the cubicles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and what I did was I went to McDonald's before the concert started because I know everyone's going to go need a toilet at Sharon. Yeah. It's, it's going to be packed. And what I did is, it, I, I always laugh at this, it's so funny um, because everyone's using the disabled accessible toilet. Um, yeah. And it, the queue's going out the door of McDonald's because everyone's thinking like me, I guess. Yeah. Um, and everyone's in the public toilet, of course, that so are using the um, disabled one. Um, the and I skip the queue because I have a just can't wait card, um, and I wave it around <laughs> like like I'm royalty. Um, and I bet they're all looking at me saying, "Well, why are you skipping the queue?" And I get to the back, and I say, "No, I'm disabled. I, like I I I can yeah. use this toilet. Um, if yeah. you want, please let me know." And then like I did say before I entered, I say, is, is, "Has anyone else got like?" granted like permission yeah, to use yeah, that yeah, toilet. Yeah. Um like the card isn't law. So I go into places sometimes if I need a toilet, let's say I once I went into a, a place and uh, because the annoying thing is now like if you go into a pub they want you to buy something because you, if you're using their yeah, toilet yeah, yeah. Uh, they say you've got to buy you can't just enter and use the toilet you've got to buy something. And then I say can I use your toilet? Um and then they'll say, no, it's only for staff only. And I say, have you heard, like, maybe what Crohn's is? And I said, uh, yeah. And then I show them my card, and then they feel bad. <laughs> and then they, yeah. they, they, they let me in, they let me use the toilet um, and everything. It's funny, like, you say, you say about that story of, obviously, skipping the queue because you're, um, I can't remember what the card is. You have to remind mm. me. Um, Just can't wait card. The just can't wait card. And I had a very similar situation at um, Wembley Stadium. So I was at Wembley Stadium seeing a gig. And anyway, I've gone to the, go to the toilet and um, there's a queue literally out the door for the disabled toilet. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but all of you can't be disabled. There, there is no physical way. Anyway, so um, I've realised that the reason they're all standing there is because none of them have got a radar key. <laughs> So I've rocked up with my radar key straight to the front. I opened the door, gone to the toilet, and then I've spotted in. The, I've spotted in the um, like second, so about the second one in. There's this really heavily pregnant lady. So I've said, "I'll like, oh, come, come in, like go in." And then I, they stopped me. I was like, "Oh, can you leave the key with us?" And then I'm like, "No, you, you, like you guys can go, go in the normal toilets." It's like it's, yeah. it is crazy. But then it's interesting as well because you come on to your point about like using public toilets if you you need the toilet. I have a really weird view of this. Obviously, it's very different for me because I'm a wheelchair user and look, I can't fit in a normal toilet. Like it's not, there's no if, buts or maybes. I can't fit. But then also I sit there and go, even if you're your average Joe, like you're completely healthy, you've got no issues. I don't see why you shouldn't be allowed to use a toilet because it's a normal bodily function to need the toilet and i yeah. i really it's one of the things that really annoys me because i'm like unless the only thing i get is it's because we've got some terrible people in this world uh, that they'll get the opportunity to use a toilet and they'll trash it yeah. and that's what puts people off if you if everyone did as they were meant to do and just went to the toilet cleaned up after themselves and left no one would have a problem but then it brings me quite nicely right. onto like i interviewed uh and um art from ibd life uh on my podcast a little while ago and he's got um he's got crohn's uh, and he's got a uh, colostomy mm. back and basically we were having a discussion because i was like it's a really tricky one when you've got people with individual indivi yeah, invisible disabilities and disabled toilets because on the one hand completely get it like if you need to use it you need to use it but then on the other hand like there is no way to tell whether you're just taking the piss and that's the worst thing is because I don't I don't want to be that guy that goes up and goes, are you really disabled or or are we just, oh, it was the one without the queue. But then it, yeah. we, we landed on the point because he agreed with me. He was like, it's really annoying because there isn't and there isn't a way. And I can completely see, we could see why each other would get frustrated with it. But it's, it comes back to that point I made earlier of if everyone did as they were meant to do and didn't and didn't bend the rules. No one would like. No one would question it because everyone would go, "Okay, um, Mason's used the disabled toilet. He must have a reason to use it," and that would be the end of the conversation. Whereas now, I sit there and I'm like, "Really? Like, oh, like I've had plenty of situations. Like, I've had cu a couple come out because they. Oh, it was just that you know, it's just they're thinking 
just because it's got more space doesn't mean that everyone can use it. And it's it's yeah. it's a really frustrating thing. But like I completely agree. Like for you guys, Crohn's is one of them ones where people don't fully understand why they may need the accessible toilet or they may need to get to a toilet quicker than say your average Joe. Yeah. And it is just about that understanding, as we said earlier. That's right. And that, that, I, a couple of years ago, I went to the Shard in London yeah. and um, near, the, near the train station, you had the weather spoons. Um, and um, I went in the disabled toilet and then you had uh, a wheelchair user outside giving me dirty looks. Um, of, like, and then, I think, I think the Welsh users actually chat to my mum while I was in the toilet. And and they said, um, why, I think she was like saying, what, why am I using the toilet? Um, because maybe to them, I, I don't look like I need to yeah, use yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that's a lot of thing you'll get because I think that's a stigma around, which is why I, I, I like that they've changed the name of it. They like, call it more, they, use, they say it's an accessible toilet more now and they've changed like the badges on there so not everyone looks like they are maybe just a wheelchair user you may have people yeah. but but don't get me wrong like we like said that there are people just use it for the sake of it like, and you're not going to know who they are you're not going to know if they are disabled or not but um but yeah and also uh, i don't know if you, you've come across this maybe but like on holiday sometimes you'll find these toilets plonked and there'll be ones where you have to pay like a pound or something to use it and um and then i'm there with the radar key um on the one where you where you don't have to pay any money use the radar key it's free and then yeah. and, and then you've got these people in the public like saying how, how come you can use that toilet and i say um I'm, i can use it i've got the disabled key and i said yeah. can i use it and i did that I, I was generous i let someone use it after me just so they can because i think that someone was struggling to get in because it, yeah. it, it is it is really hard um because i say not every disabled person will have a radar key no, it's, it's very hard to get a radar key in the first place um really um but a similar situation uh across like in i remember years ago it was in waitrose car park um and like a person was taking pictures of the number plate and everything, like saying because we were waiting in the disabled bay um, for. I think my mum was getting the shopping inside, so we just stayed, there. Yeah. <laughs> stayed there. Um, and then uh, this person's like having a, an argument and saying like you shouldn't be part of it, you're not disabled, and um, and of course we are. And I think yeah. that's another stigma where people park in disabled places and they think that. They're not, but yeah, it, it's very annoying the the stigma around it. All. It is, and and to be honest, it's one of the big things for me is, and it's a big flaw with the radar keys. Do you know one of the most stupid flaw about the radar keys is? Is I completely understand that you you need to be able to unlock the toilet at any time because if someone falls over, your carer needs to be able to help you. It makes complete sense. What doesn't make sense is the fact that anyone with a radar key can open the door. The amount of times I've been sat on a toilet and I can hear the key in oh. the door and I'm shouting like, no, 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 someone's in it, someone's oh. in it. They don't hear me and then I'm just sat there like, hi, how are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm using the toilet at the moment. Like, You see it's locked though, wouldn't you? <laughs> but that's the worst thing, they ne it never works. Like the amount of people, that, oh. like, it, like you'll look at the lock and it's like, it's white. Is it, is it locked, yeah. is it not? And then like, obviously the people that use it all the time know in an ideal world you knock before you open the door. Because normally you knock and you hear someone go, oh yeah, someone's in here. But then what I don't get is I almost feel like there needs to be, do you know like the old school uh, like flip signs to say yeah. engaged or not engaged? Because then people can't, like, it's big and you can see it and it says someone's in there. Because the, it just it's one of my biggest bugbears that people can just wander in and you're like, yeah. the whole idea of a toilet yeah. is privacy. Yeah, you... What I normally do is like um, if if you're if you're with someone, just get them to stand outside it. Yeah, um, that's what I normally and, do. Yeah, and then the, and then and the, and the hopefully they won't wander off. <laughs> oh, the, oh, the other one I do is like obviously it's my partner, so my partner will come in and literally just ha like she's like clinging onto the door like no one is getting in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you've got um, to you got to do that. It's, it's mad. But then coming on to your point about like the parking spaces, that's another one that's crazy. Like I've had that too with obviously with me, my disability is fairly visible once I'm out of a car. But when I'm in, a, in my car driving, I look like, quote unquote, your average drove. 
Um, and the amount of times I've been stopped because if you obviously I'm only 24, I've I because of the motability scheme, I drive a relatively new car. So everyone just thinks, oh, young kid got loads of money, parks where he wants. And then I get out and they're like, I remember I had one instance, one woman called me the worst word in the English language for parking in a disabled bay. I got out of my wheelchair and I've never seen someone so apologetic because she realised, oh, wait, you are actually in a wheelchair. And I'm like, yes, I wasn't just... Also, I do have a blue badge that's right there. Like... Yeah. That's it. You, you see the blue badge, you know, I don't know what they're marrying on about. Like, what are they getting out of it? Um, yeah. what, what, like, they are plenty... Like, if you wait, we'll go in a minute, and then you can you can park there if yeah. you have a disabled badge. Is that... Is, do you know what I hate? You know, the, ni- the like, nice car syndrome. So like, oh, I get to park here because I've got a nice car and I don't want anyone to scratch it. <laughs> well, first of all, learn how to park better. Second of all, <laughs> that doesn't give you a right to park in the disabled way. Yeah, just because it's a bigger space and like, but but you know, you the annoying thing about dry, uh, um, parking in general. If you see people like park in two spaces or they're so far over on your side where you're parking and they're, they're just so close and you think yeah. common sense just park in the middle yeah well that's my that's my worst thing so i remember i was going to a job interview up in i live just outside london so i was going up to a job interview in london um i pulled up to the train station to get on the train and i realized there was no disabled spaces so i thought oh well, what what am i going to do because there's no other places to park that are nearby without a massive hill and i wasn't going to be pushing up a massive hill um so I was like, okay, I've got no options. What I'll do is I'll park across two normal bays and I'll put a sign in my window to say, uh, there was no spaces available. Here's my blue badge. Um, and I had no other options. I got back and there was a parking ticket on my window. And even though I appealed the decision, they refused to revoke the parking ticket because their reasoning was, if I if there wasn't somewhere for me to park, then I shouldn't have parked there. Oh. I'm like... But, but what did you want me to do? Like, where was I meant to park? I needed to get the train. Like, it didn't make sense. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these laws don't make sense. Like, uh, a lot of these laws, like, are like, just they, they, they don't work for everyone, and it's like suits one and not the other. Yeah, I mean, as well, it's like it's it's just money making. Like, the problem is with that is that they literally just want the money for the fine. They don't care about yeah. you as a human being. They just care about are you going to pay us or not? And it's, it's, that's the worst thing is we've got into this horrible world where like it all revolves around money. And I, I say that I'm like, we all want to, we all want to earn loads of money. That's, that's a given, mm. but it's this whole thing of remembering. It's like whenever you speak to anyone in customer service, remember that the person at the end of the phone is another human being and not just a robot. Yeah. Yet, yeah. Being the keyword. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, seems in the future we might we we, we might be all be robots. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's it's mad the the way the world's going. But um, coming on to your like coming on to your Chrome. So what what um obviously you've said about obviously being immunocompromised in terms of having to be careful in terms of picking up bugs. But what other uh, areas of difficulty are there with Crohn's that people aren't probably aware of? Obviously, we've talked about like the issues surrounding needing to get to the toilet quickly, needing to get to an accessible toilet. Um, yeah, what are some other issues that maybe people aren't aware of when it comes to Crohn's being a hidden disability? Yeah, so a lot, lot of the time, like you, you will not look. It, it, you don't. You hear a lot. You don't look like you're ill and stuff like that. Um, because I, I lost a lot of weight, a load of weight I did um, in 2017 and not hearing what Crohn's was and I, I had a Kono lost me to get diagnosed and everything so there's so much people like te- teach about, like you see like, loads of people online talking about it and it's great, I, 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 I love seeing when, when people talk about things that are unnecessary because there's so many different things like everyone will experience differently um like I, people have surgery maybe um people may have really gruesome things happening like like um maybe blood when you go to a toilet um maybe um like r- abdominal pain 
that that because that, yeah. the thing with crowns, it, it affects um it affects me from let's say up on my mouth um to maybe down to, down to my down to my bum um so it affects near enough your whole body um but um so everyone's different um and medication you take does um you can catch other things with Crohn's so you can catch you may not just have Crohn's you may catch someone else while having it yeah. um like it's which is why when we had we had the the lockdowns and everything a lot of it, it was more or less the same really for me just having to be more careful um yeah. which was annoying um and still is annoying you see um because like I still have to be careful now and it's and like with the with the laws like like a lot of people who were in no compromise were told like there was just a shielding which is yeah, yeah. a shielding thing and it didn't make no sense because you you had you got told to stay in and then you got told not to stay in it was like a yo yo kind of scenario and then um what I would have done if if I was if I was in charge I'd say when everyone was in start a lockdown you tell them to go out because that would be the best time. Because it, it's ghost towns. No one. Yeah. If, if, if people are listening to the rules, not everyone would, because that's life. Not everyone's going to listen. <laughs> um, um, but yeah, I, I still went out because that was the best time to go out. Um, and it and it was very scary. Like you know, like on the news, like each day where they would have a death count, wouldn't they? Like how many yeah, people yeah. died a day? I, I I would end up turning it off because like mental health because you don't want to hear that yeah. like every yeah. day but I, th- I think a lot of us got to that point of not wanting to hear the negativity because we were so conditioned to it but it was interesting like you say with the whole um shielding thing because it was funny because i feel like there are there were uh like groups of disabilities that should have been included but weren't and then ones that were included that shouldn't have like for me personally my disability um, obviously, there are some people with cerebral palsy that are um, highly vulnerable. But for me, I wasn't in the shielding group. Like I, I, I was in the shielding group. I shouldn't have been. Like I, I don't have any um, immuno difficulties. I don't have anything like that, or that would have caused me any trouble. But then I was always getting the, the texts and the emails to say, "Don't go out." And I'm like, "But you've, but okay." So I'm being picked up. But meanwhile, my like mother-in-law that's like going through cancer treatment isn't being what like it doesn't make any sense it's it's, it's crazy the way they've done it like like they would like it, 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 it is crazy like you you'd get your letter and then it's almost like lockdown and then it's not and like they, they like the thing is with the with it all it's just that they, they all it's really hard to understand as well sometimes what's going on because if one thing was happening then they change it then they change it again um but um but the thing w- with crohn's is like you're gonna have high and lows like if you like a lot of people uh, with crohn's you go and flare up so what that means is basically it's like, like the whole thing of crohn's is where your body is attacking yourself that, that that's basically what it is and there's so many um there's so many um misconception so a lot of people will say maybe ibs is the same as ibd because as a whole uh, crohn's is involved with ibd inflammatory bowel disease not inflammatory um not not ibs is a, is a different thing it will have a, a similar things to ibd but it's it's, it's just a, it's just a different a yeah. different boat um where, where it's, it's a little bit different um but like you have ulcerative colitis which is in the ibd world let's say as well Mm-hmm. Um, which I can't have a little bit of both. So I have Crohn's and IBD, and I have something called patchy pants. So what that means is I unfortunately have the worst form of Crohn's that you can get. Um, and oh, wow. and yeah, it's, it, it, it's not nice. But I say I'm quite lucky in a way. Like I don't, I haven't really experienced any major like horrible symptoms. Maybe of my let's say my gut since um, maybe a couple of years ago. Which which is good because the pain is not great, um, and like one thing I'd love to improve with like the um, the healthcare system is that like rooms that you can go to that don't have to be with everyone because like say like people with um, chronic illnesses they have to go to A and E if they are having the flare up 
And the A and E is for people that are having accidents, like maybe you've you've got run over, which is an A and E scenario. But I think I always say um, that say I went into hospital because I had a flare up and my Chrome's was really playing up. I had to go on A and E, wait about ten hours. Um, so so and at the moment um, at my hospital, quite a long a lot of the junior doctors are on strike. So yeah. um, so. Um, I don't want to go to hospital. I'm trying not to go to hospital because no one's there. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's it's just those things you've got to think about. Like like I went to hospital once in the middle of the night, and I, I'm waiting ten. I'm I'm waiting. 10, I'm falling asleep, waiting till the morning to get seen, ha- having a blood test, getting plucked somewhere I'm not supposed to get plucked. I I, cry, I cried about it. Uh, I was actually pretty upset about it. I don't normally cry. I'm I'm one of these people that don't like to cry in front of people, um, yeah. and I will try. It, and then I was really holding this in, and it was it was putting a needle. I'm okay with needles. I wasn't when I was younger. I, I didn't like them, but this person put it in, and then I get told what made it worse. The helper came over to me, said uh, he posted. He, he's really trained with doing it, and then I'm thinking obviously he's not, but he, uh, because otherwise I wouldn't be crying, and I I don't normally cry. Um, in in public, I, I, if I did, I would just do it on, on my own accord in my bedroom yeah, yeah. or something. No, yeah, it's true. Like I say, the 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 it's that whole thing as well of having that uh, having the procedures in place to support the chronically ill community in terms of like you say, it's not really an A and E issue having having a flare up or anything like that because it's more of a it's you guys are more equipped to deal with things when they happen than say someone who's just been run over. So the thing is, it should be a completely separate entity in terms of a separate place for you to go and get your support because you shouldn't have to wait in a 10 hour queue because let's be honest, it's like that whole thing of like, I hate it when you know exactly what you need, but it takes unnecessary amount of time to get access to it. So like, I, like for example, I can imagine with your condition, you know exactly how to help it, how to ease the pain and what needs to happen. But then every time you're doing the same rigmarole, the same dance, the same movements, and you're like, I know what I'm doing. Just let me, just let us do it. Like, why are we waiting? We know what we need to do. And it's it must be so frustrating. And you'll go, you'll go to the till to say in A and E, and they'll say, "Why, why are you here?" Because I don't see any injuries. It's all, yeah. it's, it's, it's all on the inside. And that the, and I was, I will see my a liaison nurse whenever I would go to A and E, which is just a, a member, a person who can support you and stuff. Um, when, when you're there, and um, like it, I, I just find it so annoying to so say if I go to any appointment and I'm on time, and then and then the, the, the doctor or consultant aren't, I just get really annoyed about it because it's almost like you're there hours. If if it's not just an A and E, it might just be a doctor's appointment or um mm. or something. And then you're waiting at hours, and I say, I want to go home. <laughs> I want yeah. a dinner. Like, yeah. um, like they just think like you, you've booked your whole day off. Some people might even go in from their break at like um work or something. Um, yeah. Um, they don't think about that, and they say maybe they're running late because of certain scenarios. But I always, I, I always, I think they're maybe part of my autism or just in, just in general, like. I have to be there. I get there on the time that I'm supposed to be there. But if I'm if they're late, you're thinking, uh, why? Like, have I got the wrong day or something? <laughs> yeah, that's the worst thing. Is like you do you start doubting yourself. You're going, have I got the right day? Wrong day? Am I the right yeah. time? Uh, did I miss a text? Did they text me? Did they email me? Did they ring me? And I, no one told me. It's it's it is. It's a game. A bit more. when you go to the hospital, it's just like. It is just there needs to be better systems, but yeah. then we all know that the, the amount of pressure yeah. the NHS is under at the moment. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just underfunded. But um, I'm just conscious of time, just because I'm, I'm conscious that I don't want to take up too much of your evening. So I'm going to hit you with the last question, which I did give you a bit of a pre warning about um, before we started recording, and that is what's one piece of politically correctness? Do you really strongly agree with or disagree with? It doesn't have to be disability related. It could be something completely different. It's just something that really, like, really winds you up more than anything. Yeah. Um. Well, so something that I um I could try to go both or one I agree with and one I don't. Um. Like one I'd say I would agree with. Um. Is when like um 
when people say, um, like, we're not, we're all different. It's very rare, but if, 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 if people say we're all different, I, I would agree with that. Um, and um, when and one I disagree with, maybe uh, if people are saying, um, like, when, when, let's say we're speaking about disability, if they're saying that it's not a good term to use, because, like, um, within, like, you have, everyone identifies as they want. Like, you, you can have, like, disorder, disability. I don't entirely agree with the word disorder, but that's just my opinion. Like, I know people that do, and, like, um, and I, I don't agree with it. I could I could talk about how much I really don't like it. Uh, like, because to me, disorder is something, like, more look-wise, in my, in my opinion, it, it just gathers to me the word disorder is like you can't do it you can't do it and disability is a better word to use i think because it's it has the word ability in it and uh although this maybe is quite negative like at the start of the word but as a whole i think disability is much better to use than disorder but uh, i i do respect people that if they want to identify as disorder whatever condition they have it, yeah. it, i don't mind um, I don't mind, um, but um, if people, it, it, it just comes to that. If someone says to me that you can't have that opinion, you're wrong. That 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 is yeah. where I would yeah. get into something saying that you can't tell me that. Like um, like a, a couple of months ago, I came across a post on Instagram. Um, I think saying that if you identify, if you say the word disorder is wrong, no that you're like ableist or, and stuff like it and, and, and bringing that into it. And I do agree with it. And uh, uh, with, with, with a friend, um, we've um, got kind of a heated discussion, like agreeing with one another, but just getting really annoyed about it. Like, um, because I always think when people share stuff online, I think you have to be, uh, you have to be not, you have to say the pros and cons. You can't just say you're, you're that and that and that because you may agree or disagree with it, um, but yeah, that is it. Like, um, I would, I would rather say it's an ability. I'm all about being positive. I guess yeah. that's just being my journey. But some people with certain conditions, it is really bad, and it's all a lot of time maybe ne negative. So you can't yeah. understand why people may like identify as a disorder because it may be like that all the time. But I think as well, coming on to your point, like about saying, obviously using the right terminology and people wanting to identify those different things. I think the challenge, and I, I brought it up several times on the podcast and people changed, like adjusted my view slightly on it. It's just my worry is say you've got someone who's not been exposed to any kind of disability, whether it be autism, whether it be cerebral palsy, whether it be a APD, whether any, any kind of disability if a person is automatic like so as anyone coming into a scenario that's new so you're learning something that's completely new you're gonna make mistakes so you're gonna go oh i've called this person the wrong phrase or said this and it's a bit wrong i i just really worry if if people miss it if disabled people misinterpret it in terms so they get offended and get quite ag aggressive that mm. can then be the the lens that people view disabled people with um for the rest of the community when other people uh might not take offense to it some other people might have a bit more of a laid back approach and it's a hard one because on the one hand it's not like i if i i have the right to be offended on a on a topic of of something that i have a better understanding of but then on the on the other hand you need to remember that people are naive and they you only know what you know so it's a really tricky one to try and navigate but i just think with the terminology thing i always feel a bit weird because i'm a bit like it's when people get really like pernickety about what you call it like for example or like you can't call so if it's like you prefer the term accessible toilet whereas uh, I, I don't i don't mind whatever term but what i hate seeing yeah. is when people go uh it's a the same it's a it's an accessible it's a it's like just call it whatever it doesn't matter what it's called yeah. like yeah uh, just a toilet yeah, I just need to pee. Like, let me go pee. Yeah, like I don't. Yeah, I agree. It doesn't matter what it's called. It's just something that you use to go to the toilet. Yeah. Um. Like, but I think the the, the good upgrade on it is that it's it, it is more. I guess more awareness on it. Like, let us say the the, the disabled toilet because of the images. Because I think a lot of people focus more on images than writing. 
So yeah. if you if you have the pictures on the toilet or it, like you say, I think there does need to be a note on there. Like say, even just like like a, a card on it where you can stick on it. Like a like 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 if you have swirly things, are saying I'm in the toilet or not, and then you just swing it off. But the problem yeah. that you have with that is that everyone's going to touch it. <laughs> yeah, that is that is true. But then uh, saying that, I did go to a toilet. Uh, I can't believe how much of this podcast is talking about toilets. But um, I did go to a toilet once where it was a um like it was like a button. So as soon as you press the button, the color changed above the toilet to say someone's in here. Which I thought yeah. was really cool. Um, but as you say, that's a really interesting challenge. I mean, we're going on a bit of a tangent here. But like, as you say, for people who are immunocompromised, finding accessible technology to support them, but without putting them at higher risk, is actually really yeah. hard. Because as you say, the general public, you don't know who's washed their hands, who's not washed their hands, so on and so forth. So like, yeah, it's really, yeah. that's really tricky. It's really crazy. I'll, 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 I'll just tell you a little scenario here. With um, I went to the George Hotel uh, earlier. It might have been even last year now. Um, but I went and uh, I, I stayed overnight and like, I, had, I had a gin. Um, and um, like you know when you put your fruit, they, they put fruit in like, your drinks. Yeah. Um, and this person doesn't use the tongs. He just puts, he dunks his hands uh, in, in, in there and he puts the, the fruit in um the um he puts the fruit in the drink um and then once he's put his the fruit in the drink he's touched all the money um he's he, he's he's touched all the money he's touched he's touched a lot um so when he so I, i'd say one of the things what 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 was annoying about that was um he's touched all the money and he's put his hands in the drink where he hasn't washed his hands at all and then I think that that's not very hygienic so like with the handshake thing and you don't you don't know where people's hands have been um and yeah it, it's just crazy not everyone is hygienic as, as, as yourself maybe sometimes <laughs> yeah it's, it is it's, it's, it, you, people don't think about it people just think oh like it'll be fine like it is what it is but then yeah for people like yourself who are immunocompromised, it has such a big impact. But, um... uh, yeah, yeah. I I actually went to an appointment earlier this year, um, and I was in there, and th- this person was coughing, was coughing the guts up, and like the the as I exited because I stayed away, tried to stay away as, as far as I could, hmm. and then as I exited, the um the helper in there um said good uh, good luck, so like, a good luck in situation, saying I'm okay. Because this person is coughing, and they said they've never had COVID. And they say, oh, and it was like, you might have it now, um, because they're yeah. just really coughing. Um, and yeah, and I think the poor thing about that is that they knew about it before we get, uh, arrived. So I always say, if there's someone's coughing, let us know, and we'll arrange for another time. Um, because luckily, we were in close contact for a little bit just because had to check me out around certain things I was there for. Um but that that that's an annoying thing. That like just it's just all about being respectful, I think. Yeah. It's all about understanding that everyone's scenarios are slightly different and not everyone's got the same the yeah. same immunity to others. And it's it's a probably a quite it's quite a powerful point to end on is like be more aware like be more aware of what other people are going through. And I think that's yeah. something that goes for looking after your health and also looking after your mental health. That's a huge one as well. Like you don't know what that person's going through that day or that week or whatever else. So just be more mindful of what might be going on. Prepare for the worst, and it, if it's better than it is, then great. And um, but then, like yeah. as I say, I think that's just a really powerful point to end on. But I always give my guests a chance to plug. So let them know where they can follow you, where your podcast is, what you're working on. What is it? Is there anything that you're excited about? Anything like that? It's your time to shout about yourself. So yeah, okay. shout away. Yeah. So um, to to anyone, um, well, I've, I've, to, if you, if you want to find me, um, you could find me on let's say Instagram. Like my my name on there is Autistic Advocate for Crohn. So an underscore between each word. Um, and and then that, that's the same on YouTube, uh, Autistic Advocate for Crohn's. And then on Facebook, um, um, 
my page is called My Journey with Crohn's Disease and Autism. And Crohn's is spelled C R O H N S because <laughs> it's a very difficult word to spell. It can it's sort of spelled all yeah. sorts. Um, and you can find my actual my, my podcast is called um, Crohn's and Autism Awareness Advocate, and the and is a small and. Um, and the short and then you can find it anywhere you can find it on you can find it on Spotify and there's always episodes going out um, and at the minute um, I'm doing a series called Autistic Assemble so I'm in a series with a lot of people who have autism and then nice. um, um, a bit later this year I'm for it, Erin in August, I'll be doing a series called The Vulnerable, actually, as we're speaking about The Vulnerable today. Um, it, it's basically having guests on that are vulnerable and the meaning of the vulnerable, because meaning and vulnerable can be loads of different things for everyone. Um, and I thought I'd do it. I thought I'd do it because I was, I, was out, I was out with a friend not too long ago, maybe a month or two ago, maybe in February time, maybe. And the funny thing is, because I'm always dodging people, I'm like everywhere I go, I dodge people. And because I, I watched the Last of Us series that was that was on, and um, we talked about it, and he said you 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 would be good in like a zombie apocalypse or something, wouldn't you? Because you'll be surviving, you'll be running and dodging everyone. I thought that was really good, um, and I'm gonna use some inspiration with that, like with creating the logo and everything towards then. Cool. Um, but and and then I do all sort of series on my podcast um um around different topics i used to do like series one two three four five going up in numbers but then i thought i maybe scrap that and then just do it about certain topics i think doing about a certain topic is better just having people on but every once in a while i will have people on just about a topic like maybe if it's about a disability if it's just about a topic that we want to talk about yeah. um and it seems every year at least at least to try and get an act of that because I, I love doctor who um as as you can probably see um yeah and i do a lot around that um i find a lot of autistic people love doctor who as well so um because as i was growing up in school in primary school no one liked it i had no friends that liked an interest of mine and, and that's the fear a lot of people have in life that they fear if you don't like the same interest should you change but mm -hmm. i would say don't change what you like you like what you like and and, and don't change it for anything because that's good advice um yeah. Yeah, at the time of recording, I'm, I'm going to be meeting David Tennant next month, um, and it's going to be it's going to, being vulnerable. Awesome. It's going to be it's going to be risky because it's at a comic con, my first ever comic con. It's going to be a load of people, but I the thing is in love, you have to risk things if you want to see people that you like. Um, yeah. But yeah, but yeah, um, and last bit of advice I would say is just um, keep going, just. Do what you're doing. Come on a podcast. Talk about something you're passionate about. Because we'll find um, it's good fun. It's good fun. You meet new people. You you, yeah. you meet new friends. Completely agree. It's like I always say. It's like speed dating. It's like speed yeah. dating, but speed dating, but with friends. Like you just <laughs> sit. Like in normal life, you don't sit and chat for an hour and interrogate <laughs> each other for an hour. Yeah. So it's always good. But thank you so much for coming on, Mace. It's been amazing to sit and chat with you and learn a little bit more about ASD and learn a bit more about um, Crohn's as well. So thank you so much. Um, and you. we'll see you again soon. See you again soon. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Not Quite Podcast. Please make sure you follow us on TikTok and Instagram to get regular updates about the podcast.